But I'll talk about it anyway. Ten modern horror movies that became classics. And the reason I'm speaking about this and it's almost in a sense of is this a, a sort of golden era of, of horror? If you like. I know the seventies and eighties they loved fucking amazing horror. The likes of Freddy Krueger, Halloween, that was the seventies, but it folded into the eighties. Predator, I'm going to class Predator as a sort of action horror. Alien, which I'll get into in a moment. There's lots of other ones. The Exorcist. Jason. Was that the 80s? I don't know. Those, that era delivered amazing horror. Visceral horror. Really violent. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Really visceral, brilliant horror. And also, it's always been about that kind of horror. As an undercurrent. But maybe not as mainstream. The 90s, it was more silly horror for me. Even Halloween became silly. You were decapitating the motherfucker and he was coming back. Obviously you had like a scream, um, which you're still floating about. I think that's a seventh one coming out. Fucking hell, I've missed about five. Um, but for the last decade or so, I think, and I've, I've contained it a decade, uh, because Talk To Me, I've heard about Talk To Me. I've heard about it. I've heard it's very, very fucking good. I'm talking about sequels already. i seen a shot of us and it was like a dead hand coming out of the table. It looked fucking crazy. I'm all for that, man. I'm all for that. I love horror, man. I love it. I had my own horror show in here last night. Earlier this morning. I was playing Dead by Daylight. There's a fucking bin full of clothes next to me. It fucking moved. It moved on its own. Right over there, it moved. And I'm like, what the fuck have I just witnessed? It took me aback. I tried to recreate it. I have no logical explanation for how that motherfucking bin moved. That is the first potential paranormal thing that I've ever witnessed in 34 years of my existence. That motherfucking bin moved. Full on moved. I'm not going to like fucking freak me a bit, but I cracked on with it and I got out and dead by the day I survived. So it didn't shake me that much. But yeah, I'm all for horror. I love it. I just don't want it seeping into my actual life though. I'm watching too many fucking Casper Sight videos. I need to wean myself off it. But yeah, man, 10 horror movies. Um, they, they've, they've went outside the decade. I'm not having it. Paranormal Activity is not a classic horror movie. I'm sorry. It was fucking shit. Box. I hate that. Found footage. Shaky cam shit. Not for me. The Cabin in the Woods, I, I've never seen. The Babadook, I've never seen. So I put my own ones in. Hit chapter one. Green Room. I fucking love Green Room. One of the best slasher hostage sort of movies I've ever seen. It was the late great Anton Yelchin, Patrick Stewart. It was brilliant. It was like a sort of neo-Nazi club. This band rock up. They're in the green room. All hell breaks. Fucking loose. It was violent. Great. Loved it. One of the best horror movies I've seen. Mike Flanagan, Hush. Unbelievable horror movie. Concept of being deaf, having a psychopath roaming outside of this house in the middle of a sort of wood. Just brilliant. The film is great. I think it was John something Gallagher. He's a great actor. He had one of the best deaths I've seen in a horror movie, incidentally, where he's fighting a boyfriend who's a big towering muscly guy. And he actually slashes his artery, but he keeps choking him the fuck out and he nearly kills the killer. But then he loses enough blood to pass out and die and he gets off with it. It's fucking great. I loved Hush. Brilliant movie, man. Really, really, really good movie, man. And it's just Mike Flanagan is... Fucking up here when it comes to horror, isn't he really? The Witch, Robert Eggers. I didn't really class that as a horror movie as such. That was more of a sort of mystery thriller. Just classy Eggers, mentalness, claustrophobic, really weird fucking film. But I loved it. It Finch from The Office in it. It had Anya Taylor-Joy, who went in the buff at the end, I think, and went to a, a strange witch thing. Started dancing naked. It's perfect, really. Edgar's movie. It was great. I loved it. Um, Midsummer. Still not seen Midsummer. I don't know why. I've seen Hereditary though. And uh, Ari Aster. What can you say about Ari Aster? I went to see Hereditary in the theatre. That was a, an experience. Let me tell you. Talk about slow burn done well. When you had full blown um, sort of demon worshippers. Was that what you call them? I don't know. A cultist whipping out her tackles at the end and Colette's sewing her, sewing her fucking head off in the attic. I'm like, this is fucking wild. I remember the reaction. It was silence in the theatre. People 
were fucking stunned by the movie. And that little noise, oh my God, creeped me the fuck out. I was hearing that in my sleep. Um, totally looking forward to the Dead by Daylight movie too. It's a Dead by Daylight movie coming out. Oh, I fucking love the sound of that. Interesting too. Got a bunch of psychics. Is that, is that maybe psy- psychics against monsters? Is that psychos? I don't know if you mean psycho. I don't know. Listen, there's a great lore in Dead by Daylight, brilliant, dense lore. Some of the characters, the survivors, really great backstories. And also Nick Cage is in it now. So we can get Nick Cage into acting a Dead by Daylight movie. And I'm going to speak about that in a moment. Dead by Daylight is doing a collaboration with Alien, which has been wanted by the fandom for fucking years, man. They put a, a survey out the other week, two weeks back, asking you who you'd like to see them collab with. I picked Alien. I think I picked Alien and I think I picked It. So I want to see Pennywise. They've got a clown in it, but he's a prick, he's shit. I want to see uh, Pennywise. Because uh, he in- invaded my absolute fucking life. The Tim Curry one back in the 90s. And uh, maybe, maybe not so much the actual Skarsgård one, but certainly the Tim Curry one with those crazy eyes. He was he haunted my dreams. So did Freddy Krueger, incidentally. And I had a bitch slap him on it, so it's... Payback. Uh, what's this? I played Dead by Daylight once live streamed it on my channel a couple of years ago. I did off what I'm I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a god tier survivor. I don't play killer, but I'm maybe a tear down from it. I'm very fucking good. I turn the tables on the killer. I like to terrorise them on the nightly. So much so there was a great moment last night. I wished I was actually capturing it. Because we're going to put it up in the other channel where I, I get downed. Someone flashlight save me. I stunned them with a pallet and then flashlight minded them right after it was fucking brilliant great they were stunned three times in seven seconds and they just chased me the whole fucking game which is right up my street that's the way I play it um, haven't heard about Dead by Daylight movie unless I forgot but I am looking forward to Five Nights at Freddy that's a game I've not played man but I've seen others playing it talk about nightmare fuel absolute fucking nightmare fuel I, I get creeped out with that shit that, that plays with the peripherals and I, I fucking detest dolls and like teddies, creepy teddies. There was a clown doll that haunted my childhood as well. That motherfucker used to get put behind wardrobes that were seven feet tall. Probably weren't, but it felt like seven feet when I was a young guy. It'd get out, man. It'd be staring at me at the side of the bed. Now, it's also not possessed. It's clear my sister was taking it out and putting it beside the bed so that I'd wake up looking at it and absolutely shit myself. But that haunted me. And I've always had an aversion, an absolute deeply set hatred for dolls and these motherfuckers who sleep in rooms with full size dolls they've got an illness and then they wonder why things are going wrong in the house why they're hearing knocks why the fucking things are possessed look at it look at that thing why would you put that in a fucking house let alone in your bedroom facing you while you're sleeping what is wrong with people what the fuck am I actually sharing an existence with? <sighs> I don't know. Get Out, incidentally. That was another horror movie. And look, this is a Marmite one. People, Some people fucking hate this. Some people hate all Jordan Peele movies. Oh, I've just seen something there. <laughs> I love Get Out. I loved it, man. Brilliant cast. Loved the concept. The way it was kind of diving into the whole political thing and the sort of, sort of uneasiness that certain white people have around black people and they have to over-emphasise that look, I'm not racist I really like black people Bar- I voted for Barack Obama I just love the way it checked into that and the way it checked into the sort of societal ills and things that's what Peel does great in all these movies he really does shine a light on things and does it in an intelligent manner where it can be consumed by the masses and it lets them think long and hard this was an example of that. Jordan Peele, fucking brilliant. Uh, eh, not Jordan Peele, um, Daniel Kaluuya. Incredible fucking actor. The guy's the same age as me. He's an Academy Award winner. So it doesn't get much better than that. A Quiet Place. Went to see all these movies in the theatres. I think there's only been two. <laughs> but I loved it. What an experience. So quiet, as you'd think. But just again, I love this concept of, of introducing horror and introducing sort of ailments into that situation, the little girl was deaf, she's actually deaf in real life, living in a world where a single fucking mistake can mean your whole family getting wiped out and you're deaf. Brilliant. Really like the second one as well. 
That is a classic horror movie. The Conjuring. James Wan. Love the first two. Wait to see the third one as well in the theatres. Wasn't quite as good. Just classic. The family, family, and obviously, um, I always forget his fucking name. James Patrick, Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson. Obviously the, what were they called again? What was the fucking dynamic duo called again? The Warrens. Just horror done really well, man. Uh, and it really did start a sort of a genre in horror, in horror, if I can speak, for the sort of swelling sounds for the jump scares. But it was never really replicated to the extent that it was done in the two conj- first two Conjuring movies. Really enjoyed it. So, in a sense, I've been off in a fucking sort of waffling mess of a, a sort of discussion for the last 10 minutes. But I do think this is a, a golden era of horror movies. I think there's a lot of great act- directors doing brilliant things. They're shaking up the genre. They're doing things with sub-genres. Like Sir Jordan Peele, Ari Aster, Robert Eggers. Jo- uh, I was about to say Jordan Peele again. He's that great. I'm going to see him twice. The other one I was thinking about, Mike Flanagan. Some brilliant, brilliant directors doing horror really, really well. And, and then also you had... Um, other one. Fuck. Black phone. I think it was called. Well, your man. I always blank his name. It's not a good night for me for names. Was it a black phone? Maybe help me out for someone in the chat. Your man. A great actor. Get born to her, I think. Yeah, I think it was a black phone anyway. I think it was based off a Stephen King novel. There's some great fucking horror getting done just now. I think it has a golden era. Yeah, the black phone, yeah. There's some broken. I mean, it just I love that shit. Ethan Hawke, that's the fucking one. Thank you very much, son. You're bailing me out here. Clearly having a fucking stroke in front of the camera. I need to get a drink. I'm so unbelievably dry. That's better. Okay. I can't think of the word. <laughs> Got to wet the throat and the tongue sometimes. Short story by Stephen King. Yeah, it's his son. There you go. So the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. wonder if he goes and stays in haunted hotels or apparent haunted hotels to get inspiration. Uh, that chapter two as well, man. I mean, it was a TV movie in the 90s, wasn't there? I think that was the Tim Curry one. What a mini series. But I really enjoyed it. I think it was um, Muschietti. Andres, Andy Muschietti. Bill Skarsgård was in there as it, Pennywise, I should say. Just brilliant young cast. I uh, really liked the movie, I liked the way it flowed. And yeah, it was just great getting back and revisiting a character that haunted me, terrified me when I was a little kid and kind of laughing at it. Uh, and just creepy as fuck, isn't it, really? And Georgie, a little red balloon. Just a creepy madachod, as I like to say now. Uh, but a great movie. And again, another example of horror done well. The second one, not so much. But yeah, going to move on.